Rectification of the Inner Self by Taqwa, God Consciousness, Chapter 2 of Selections from the Garden of the Wise and the Meadows of the Virtuous by Ibn Hibban. On the authority of Usama bin Sharq, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet والسلام, said, Ma karya Allahu minka shay'an fala taf'alhu idha khalaut. If Allah dislikes for you to do something, then do not do it even when you are alone, is the translation of this hadith of the Prophet. Let's read it again. If Allah dislikes for you to do something, then do not do it even when you are alone. The wise and prudent person must know that intelligence has branches of commands and prohibitions that he must know and use at their prescribed times as a demonstration to the layman and riffraff. The first of the branches of intelligence is taqwa, and rectification of the inner self. Because whoever purifies his inner self, Allah will purify his outer self. And whoever spoils his inner self, Allah will ruin his outer self. Indeed, the one who said the following was right. If you are alone for a time one day, don't say, I am alone. Instead, say, there is a watchful guardian over me. And of course, the watchful, the watchful guardian is capitalized in the book. So I take it to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, the angels are watching us as well. And don't think that Allah is ever heedless or that what is hidden from him is unseen. Do you not see that the days pass quickly and that tomorrow is close for those who are heedful? The wise person must give importance to the improvement of his inner self and guarding his heart when he draws close, when he moves away, when he is active, and when he is still, because his times only become difficult and his enjoyment ruined when the heart becomes diseased. Even if there was no other reason than the fact that Allah exposes what is inside a person, whether good or bad, that would be sufficient for it to be incumbent upon the intelligent person to rectify and guard his inner self. Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Sinji al-Baghdadi told me these verses of poetry. If you display something good, then make what you hide even better. For the one who conceals good is characterized by it and the one who conceals evil is characterized by it. And the one who conceals evil is characterized by evil. Let's read the poem again. If you display something good, then make what you hide even better. For the one who conceals good is characterized by it, and the one who conceals evil is characterized by evil. The wise person should rectify himself and keep away from sinful behavior by using his taqwa and righteous deeds. Therefore, if his body is not acting piously, he must rein it in and control it with his heart, because the actions of the limbs are purified by the purification of the heart. Mansur bin Muhammad al Qurayzi recited the following verse of poetry to me. A man is nothing but his heart and his tongue. If his information and behavior are obtained, and if a man's garments are not pure, then you may not be able to purify it by washing it with water. And not everything you fear will harm you with evil. And not everything you wish for will you obtain. The wise person must not forget to guard his heart from the things that cause the heart to harden because if you rectify the king, you rectify the army. And if you corrupt him, you corrupt the army. Therefore, if he is worried about two qualities, then he should refrain from the one that is closest to his desires. And he, and he should pursue the one most distant from ruin. And the one who said the following poetry was right. Actually, before reading the po poetry, I want to uh, read this last line because uh, it's a big thing to reflect upon with our decision-making, especially when we're alone. Therefore, if a man is worried about two qualities, then he should refrain from the one that is closest to his desires, and he should pursue the one most distant from ruin. And the one who said the following poetry was right. If your heart is ever conflicted between two affairs, then choose the more decent and beautiful. And if you are worried about a bad affair, then hesitate. And if you are worried about a good affair, then just do it. 
Hearts are purified from their impurities once one's concerns become a single concern for Allah, and everything becomes unimportant compared to the goal of pleasing the Creator by obedience to Allah while in seclusion or in the company of others. And that is the best sustenance for this life and the next for those who are heedful. Muhammad bin Ishaq bin Habib al-Wasiti told me this poetry. Fearing Allah is obligatory upon you for every affair. You will see its consequences on the long day of judgment. Oh yes, indeed, fearing Allah is the best of outcomes and the greatest provision of the ephemeral traveler. Ephemeral, of course, meaning uh, temporary. And that's the end of the chapter. There is a note on the part where it mentions that if you rectify the king, you rectify the army, and if you corrupt him, you corrupt the army. The author puts a note. The proof of this narrate the proof of this is the narration reported from the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Aslam in the Sahiyain from the hadith of Nu'man bin Bashir. Quote, beware, in the body there is a piece of flesh. If it is sound, the whole body is sound. And if it is corrupt, the whole body is corrupt. Indeed, it is the heart.